Thanks all for attending the session. This is Philip from Intel, who is the maintainer of 0 DCI test service, aka the kernel test robot. What we observed is that this kernel community has evolved the testing to cover each important test activity in a modernized manner, from developing the testing to service to result consolidation, or the scrub to risk criteria discussion. So all these largely formalized testing effort connect different pieces together. Today, I will talk about the status of such trend and how each part works together, then the involvement from 0DCI perspective, after which we want to exchange the ideas and have discussion around any enhancement or missing part of this virtual team. Community-wide testing is decentralized and independent. No doubt, with the collective effort, more capabilities are added. Like the bisection now becomes the standard part of most CI, the shift left testing can, can detect issues in earlier this stage. And the coverage based fuzzing exposes a lot of issues. We can think of more of such uh, examples. More players enter this field to provide a valuable perspective to contribute to the larger scale testing. So the question in my mind when I observe this, what are the key events to finally result in the for in a for functional q18 this is a simplified loop to mm -hmm. describe the workflow sure. it is a very high level and conceptually right mm -hmm. the flow is already there from the beginning mm -hmm. while the way we use it to participate in this daily and the mindset we have keeps evolving oh. the accumulated changes mm -hmm. is to big difference so let me uh, explain further Usually, the, uh, the analysis of the requirement is important to have the right tests planned and implemented. Meanwhile, in a few areas, the advancement in testing methodology decouples such needs. One highlight is the adoption of test auto-generation, uh, like the Trinity and Syscaller test Syscall in a fuzzing way. The kernel build testing utilizes the render configure to do massive testing to find corner cases. Then, in each testing level, um, the adoption of engineering, like from the unit test to integration to more complex system level. This best practice is the way how developers can test their own code in first place. And uh, the new ideas keep coming, like the root test for driver regression testing, like a static analysis running by a total robot. They all extend the landscape of testing. In test execution phase, to maximize the output of test suites, continuous running is a must, either by individuals or by a test service. More players are contributing to the coverage of Linux kernel, especially different robots. It is not easy for any developer to duplicate the full CI in, in developer's own site. There are different models to connect with CI. The typical case is like kernel CI, which allows distributed testing from any place with a central place for results. And uh, because of the enlargement of test scope and the pursuit of in-time results, so there's a need to uh, have more grown computing resource and storage. So these results in most test services, if not all, are hosted in cloud for better scaling. Next, it comes to test report and the bug scrub. Uh, here, the bisection is quite helpful to provide hint when there's many changes mixed together. There are commonalities across different testing effort, like the need to report out the finding and how to measure the quality. I like the idea of KCIDP to consolidate the results and allow a customization of user to subscribe what is um, interesting. Usually, maintainers and the developer trace into reported issues. It could be helpful to have a general way to trace important problems from the whole kernel sphere. With the debut of regression board, it connects different pieces, uh, like the bug spread in Bugzilla email discussion and the CI report. The difference it brings, I see, is it streamlines this activity that make it more than a single tool, but uh, 
kind of a maintainer on the regression side. And the collaboration with developer becomes tighter. Tools like LKB tests, TaxMake, the repro script from Syscola are designed for developer to easily reproduce the issue and verify the fix. And, and there are discussions focused on the release process. And some are already discussed in early session, like how the risk criteria are and how to implement this. So these are all important to assist maintainers to decide whether everything is ready to send the pull request or whether it's the right time to accept a pull request. Now, to have a summary for what has been talked so far, every test activity or typical practice is now having corresponding ownership and the modernized methodology. Of course, the newly introduced ideas are not replacement to existing approaches, but more like they are as a whole, and they are different pieces to solve a puzzle. That's why I say a uh, full functional virtual QA team emerges. And the ZDCI is glad to be part of this journey. It is uh, the very first service to provide the full stack coverage on all repos and, um, and the mailing list. Also, it adds bisection as its native capability at the beginning. It focuses on build testing a lot by utilizing random configure and the shift to left testing. Later, it brought static analysis, promoted the more strict warning check, adopted the clan, and recently uh, adding the KS Met tool. The reason to increase the build quality uh, is to achieve a higher success rate of runtime bisection. Otherwise, the bisectability cannot be promised. So the CI is partially open sourced with LKP tests tool, which integrates modern ATA test suites from industry, which tries to provide a uniform way to run them to analyze the result. The other part is kernel build and the test service, which uh, is running in Intel um, internally. We have some focuses recently. First is we are investigating how build issues can still be escaped to mainline after all the shift left uh, testing effort, what we can further improve. Secondly, through this year it is bisection driven, we only report out the issue if bisection is succeeded. This means when some bisection fail, the branch can contain issues that we haven't reported. So hopefully we can analyze the failure pattern to learn something, to learn some general findings and feedback the learning to the bisection logic. Machine learning also has the possibility to assist the testing. We are adopting this in log analysis to judge the bisected commit is related to the problem or not before human is involved. Also, we are prototyping to reduce the test scope based on what has changed to do more focused coverage. Last but not least, we look for wider collaboration, such as joining KCIDB to post what we have tested. And this is still in the playground phase. Later, we will ma migrate to the production. Any discussion, and we also have some discussion like any practical approach to open source small pieces of 3D CI. And uh, there are a lot of discussions regarding improving the overall testing in community. And this is uh, just one more. I will share some challenges open from the general experience and open for discussion after that. Um, for the code change, the developer is doing the necessary testing at the first place. While there's a limitation sometimes for how widely the test can be, considering certain changes may have higher risk or wider impact. Here, the shift left testing could be helpful to engage early if developed post to mailing list or, or their own repos. The next part is how developer can communicate what tests are already there to cover the changed code. So the test service can acquire such information to provide feedback in a short time, or this can expose the test coverage status to maintainer, also to gather the test uh, quality. 
systematic test coverage would be hard if considering the uh, available platform and different test focus and uh, uh, resource. The diagram is the rough data how the CI runtime coverage is, and we regularly review this to try to fill the uh, gap. So hopefully gradually more test suites or test strategies strategies can be introduced. And the next change is the smooth smooth test execution is relied heavily on existing test suites. Any behavior change of test cases, either the test result or the output format would impact the automation side. So test compatibility is kind of important. A related question is whether the same test suite version is applicable to mainline, to stable, to next. So only one binary is needed to maintain and run for all the posts. There are a lot of things we can optimize, like the bisection, like how to select a smaller test scope, and also the test duplication. For example, we do a lot of random config testing, but uh, a lot, uh, but uh, some config seems to have no effect. Probably it's an indicator that most or some of the random configure are duplicated that's why some is not take uh, effective oops i seem uh, skip one page yeah, no, no. let me get back yeah, this is for tip the left discussion the purpose is to reduce uh, reduce the funding on mainline so we can test a lot of coverage uh, from the web side i think there are and two parts. First is how the CI can engage early, so maybe developer can subscribe to the CI service. And also for the patch testing posted on mailing list, developer can have some responsibility like to specify the base, so it's easier for a robot to have had a chance to cover it. Besides that, develop uh, could have their own way to validate the code. Such method may not be covered by existing test suites, so it's helpful to move them to well-known test framework. This can allow such test ideas be run regularly by any test service. Next, any problem can be solved by AI by machine learning. Is there any practices that we can learn from? Based on the current reported by tech, we can see usually the top 10 covers about only half of the findings. So this is kind of the pattern of long tail. The rest are found by a lot of individuals. How can test service uh, further help here? The rule in kernel is we don't introduce regression. While it is possible, some real problems are only detected at a later time, uh, such as some corner cases, would it be a requirement to fix all the regressions? The trace of regression is another challenge. Well, with the support of Bugzilla and the regression bot, it is under better control now. We are interested to have more capability to understand the kernel quality. For, in, for instances, with some kind of data mining, we can answer the queries like what is the most risky component so we can look for more test cases for it. Is the coverage enough for this submitted code? Whether the test result is false positive if we do a cross check on another test service. Now, in the last stage, a clear description for develop to reproduce is very helpful, though so there are still chances. Um, some issues are quite dependent on the environment. And uh, what to do to ease the maintenance work? 
here is one example the maintainers describes the acceptance criteria and obtains the answer in a one click way by querying a test service or querying KCLDB. Here, the criteria, the criteria can be like there's no build failure, but KCF test pass, the changed code has 50% coverage by KUnit tests. So, this can assist the maintainer to do the judgment more easily. That's all the challenges I listed. I try to avoid duplication to early discussions. Uh, so if you have any comments, inputs to these challenges, or anything you want to discuss, yeah, feel, feel free to share. Yeah, thank you. So one of the things I'll observe is that very oftentimes uh, upstream developers are constrained by just available resources. So uh, they're, you know, speaking just as the ext4 developer, the standard 4K block size default, I try to make sure is failure free all the time. However, Occasionally, there will be flaky failures that only happen 5% of the time, 10% of the time. And QA departments like Louise, they want to run tests 100 times, right? It's the same test week 100 times. And test week takes two hours. So if you're going to run a test that takes the test week that runs two hours, 100 times, that's 200 hours. That is not something I have time to do, so I don't do it. And so therefore, there will always be some flaky test failures or some esoteric configs where at least in file system land, there will always be failures. I wish that were not true, um, but I don't have the resources to apply to that. Now, a virtual QA uh, organization sounds great, except for the fact that it usually requires very specialized knowledge in that subsystem, because very often the reason why those flakes are still there is the senior developers have tried for, you know, an hour or two to try to fix it, got nowhere and said, I have better things to do with my time. So if you take a relative kernel newbie and ask them to try to fix a bug, which very clearly is a flaky bug that only happens 5% of the time, that's not a recipe for success. Right, and so this may be unique in the file system world just because file systems are highly parallelized, store a lot of state, and are prematurely optimized to within the integral lives because people care about performance above all else, right? Which are the three things that you should never do if you want a robust program, right? Don't premature optimize, try to avoid storing state, and try to avoid threads if you can all help it. And file system violates all of these principles. <laughs> so, you know, very often the file system people are talking about all of these hard problems we have, and I'll be the first to acknowledge this may not be as true in other parts of the kernel. But I suspect if you poke hard, you will find that there are a lot of flaky tests. The tests are dependent on the nature of the CPU or storage device that you're using a whole bunch of things that make this a very, very hard problem. And that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try to solve the low hanging fruit, right? But I think we do need to acknowledge that sometimes, you know, some of the corner cases, which are the ones that I think those of us who are kernel developers care the most about, apart about, are the very, very really hard ones, right? Um, an easier thing to do is to run tests on the LTS kernels and discover commits that need to be backported to the LTS kernels. And maybe that's a good way to get people who are interested in testing, but who aren't deep experts, you know, being able to contribute in some way. And so maybe that's another thing we need to think about is, yes, we have a lot of resources. How can we get them to learn how to do the deeper stuff and like not run away in frustration <laughs> when we like give them really, really hard bumps. Thank you very much. We're kind of running out of time for this one. Uh, well, if you have a quick question and then we have uh, another talk. Yeah. 
Um, uh, so I, we've, I've worked at Red Hat for a number of years. We've had similar problems. And is there a way to instrument XFS tests or instrument the system to collect debug data? data? We had, years ago, we had a problem with NFS. Same problem, you run it 100 times, it's really flaky. We decided, you know what, we're just going to do a Wireshark dump of the protocol every time we run the test. And every time, if, if, it, if it passes, we just throw it away. If it fails, then we just give it to the NFS team and say, hey, look, here's a Wireshark dump. And there's parts of the data. And after a while, they started on noticing trends across this flaky data. Now, it took months because it flaked maybe every 100, 200 times. But after a while, they collect enough data, like, oh, there's some trends, here, some problems. Okay, we finally found a problem. Is it? Yeah, so I, I, I like to take some time and, and encourage uh, fixing the flaky uh, test in XFS. Thanks a lot, and thanks, Philip. Um, next, we have uh, Brendan, I believe. <laughs> 